Vlogmas day 23. Christmas everybody, it's Emma here from Emma Roca Art um, doing the vlogmas for the lovely Karen at uh, KA Equestrian. So I am, um, this is the most festive I've been, I do have a reindeer on my jumper, um, I've not even got my tree up yet, I'm sad to and ashamed to admit I've been so busy, um, however, um, I wanted to, I thought it would be nice to give you a bit of an overview of the process that I use for painting. Partly because I'm a firm believer that everybody is creative, everyone has creativity within them and it's a way to express yourself and, and everyone should have a go. Um, I didn't know I could paint like this until I tried. Um, I've always been artistic, I've always been able to draw and do dabble but I didn't know that I could do this until I tried. So you don't know what you're capable of until you try and I think at this time of year when everyone's, you know, when people are on holiday and you've got a little bit more time, have a go. Just have a go. You just don't know what you could do, and it's very therapeutic painting. Um, I lose myself when I'm painting. Um, I get complete. I lose complete lack of time, uh, or track of time, I should say. Um, <laughs> I'm not painting from lack of time most of the time, but anyway, that's a whole other video. But um, it's a really therapeutic process, and I think it's good for the soul, and I think everyone should do it. So my challenge to you is: over Christmas, have a go. Pick up a paint, uh, pick up a pencil, a piece of paper. It can be a biro pen. Find something you want to draw and draw what you love. I teach a sketching class, and I don't have any. We don't do still life. We don't do. We do. People draw what they want to draw. They draw what they love. They draw what they like. So that's what you should do. Go and find something you love or you like, and have a go. So my process, I use reference photos mainly. Um, and I'm very lucky that I have some uh, fantastic photographs that have been donated by photographers for use um, by artists that are copyright free. Um, you have to be a little bit careful um, that you're not using um, photographs that you don't have permission to use. You must always have permission to use a photograph, uh, especially from a commercial point of view. And um, you need to make sure you're not kind of um, pitching any copyright laws, so you need to be a little bit careful there. But I'm very lucky, I've got some really good photo uh, reference images. Um, and the one thing that I've found is a bit of a theme across all of my um, images is the light. And it's where the light sits within the, or the way the photographer's captured the light in the photograph that attracts me to it in the first place. So that's a theme across all of my, my reference photographs. Um, and it's starting to kind of come through in my paintings is that there's a, a very much a thing about light anyway. So I start with my canvas. Um, I normally start, and I tend to paint quite big, don't really paint very small very often, I prefer big. Um, but in saying that, the small ones can be quite cute as well. Um, but you can start small, you don't need to go big. Um, I use a grid when I'm scaling up simply because um, it allows you to get the perspective um, and when you're scaling up it's quite difficult if you're working from something small I mean this is a fairly small canvas but if you're working on something that's a bit bigger like this one behind me it just helps you with a very basic grid just to get the, the points and the um, the perspective right so I start and I will use um, a little grid and I just sketch out now this looks horrific at this point it's going to change so don't worry if it looks really awful when you start because you can change it as you go but it's just to get an idea of where things sit on the page and then um, I use fast drying oils because as the title suggests they are fast drying normal oil paints can take anything up to a week to dry depending on how thickly you use them for me I tend to use lots of layers so I do thin layers on top of one another so I do a layer let it dry and then I paint white on top of dry and I layer up and main things to allow me to build depth and tone so um, I, I prefer to work that way however the fast drying oils for me are great because it means you've not got wet canvases lying around all over the house and people getting oil paints on their clothing which is a bit of a nightmare um, and then I, so I pick my colours depending on what I'm painting, I put them out and um, I make a start. Now, the very first layer that you do will look probably quite childlike, but a lot of my paintings I look at them and I think, oh my god, it looks like my, you know, my niece has done it. Um, 
Oh, Minis is actually quite good. But anyway, um, so the first layer look, always looks something like this, and it doesn't always look. It's not. It's not going to end up looking like this. It'll look very, very different. But this is a starting point. I hate having a white canvas, and I much prefer once I've got at least one layer down. Um, I feel much better because then you can start to build on top of that. The first layer never looks that great. And quite often, if you speak to artists, they'll tell you that your the paintings go through a really ugly phase where you look at it and think, hmm, is this going to work or do I need to bid it? Because it could end up looking horrific. And most artists will tell you the same thing. The ugly phase is quite hard. You have to kind of power through it a little bit. So don't be alarmed if when you're painting, it looks horrific because it will change. So that's layer. That's the first layer of this one. To give you an idea, this one is a second layer. So once I've got all the basic colours on, um, you can then start to build on that. So this still is fairly simple and quite straightforward. There's quite a lot of work still to be done to this, but it is a second layer which then just looks much, starts to build a little bit of depth. And you build depth through the layers of the paint that you're adding onto the canvas. Um, and all The other thing that builds depth in your paintings is to have a wide range of colour. So something that I find in, when I'm teaching, particularly my sketching, is to get a variety. You need a variety of tones to build depth. So you need to have quite a big range. So you need to look at the colours and really look carefully at the colours in the image. And you're trying to pick out a wide range because that wide range will give you depth because you need that depth of tone and the tonal values to give you that three-dimensional effect. Um, that's sometimes the hardest thing for people to grasp and to also pick out colours. More often than not, you, when you look at colour, you have to really look at it and decide, is it the colour you think it is? Because quite often you think it might be a grey, but actually it's a, it's a purple. Or, you know, it can look brown, but it's a red. So those are the colours that, that build the tone. So you want to have a wide variety of colours um, and, and tones and tonal values across your painting to build depth. The other thing that I bang on about in my my pupils in my sketching class will tell you this, that you need to have really, you have, your darks need to be dark and your lights need to be light. You need to have a big range. Your lights will look lighter when your darks are darker and you will get much better form um, and depth within your painting if you have dark darks and light lights. So for example here, this is really quite dark and will probably be darker when it's done. But what that allows is that this highlight here will show um, because it will be light and much lighter. Um, so you want your dark dark and your light light. And then the other layers as they build, I have another one here. So this is, I think, layer three, possibly four actually. So this is another image, that another painting. And as you can see, um, I was talking about light. There's something about this that I love, the light in this image. I really need to sit further back so you can see it. But this here is, isn't finished, there's still quite a lot of work to do. But as you can see, it's starting because the layers that we put on here, you're starting to get more depth in this image um, and this painting, and it's starting to become a little bit more um, realistic than the likes of this. So that's this is the process I have. So I if people work differently, but this is how I like to work. So I will probably do another... I would say two or three layers of this before it's completely finished. And also a bit like the painting behind me, this, fluff, this one here isn't finished, there's still a lot of work to do here. However, what we get at the end of it is something like this. So she is finished, she's been finished for quite a while. Um, she's available as a print if you want one, but anyway. Um, sorry for the plug. <laughs> this is a finished piece. So um, I don't varnish, sorry to get a reflection there, I don't varnish my pieces, um, some paint, uh, people do, I tend not to, um, but um, that's a finished piece. So you can see there the difference in that to the start, to the, to the starting point. So that's a bit of a quick roundup of how I, what my process is. Um, it can take anything up to 25 to 30 hours when you by the time you've done all of the layers and it can and it's really quite time you know consuming but i love it and do you know what give it a try you you just don't know what you what you're capable of until you give it a try you never know you might find that you can do more than you thought you could so my challenge to you is take some time over christmas sit down with a glass of mulled wine pick a painting you or picture you love and give it a bash I hope you all have a fabulous Christmas and New Year. Thank you all for your support so far this year and I will see you all in the new year.
Bye.